In this video, we'll go over a mapping process for graphing the function y is equal to a f of k x minus d plus c. So far what we know is we take a parent function and then transform it. And in the last few videos what we did was we went through each of these letters and figured out how they affect the graph, this a, k, d, and c. However, we've gone through each of them individually and it's sort of easier to graph a transform function when you're only transforming it with one transformation. How do we go about combining all of the transformations and making that graphing process as smooth as possible? Now to make this process as smooth as possible, what we can do is something called mapping. So we can take coordinates or points off the parent function put them through a mapping process and then get points for the transform function. Now this whole process is honestly best shown through an example. So let's say that we have to graph this function right here. This negative 2 root 3x minus 4 minus 5. Now just by initially looking at it, it looks overwhelming. There's so many transformations going on. So it's hard to visualize how this graph is going to look, where to start a table of values, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go through a couple of steps to graph it. The first step is you want to recognize what is the parent function of the transform function. So if you can't tell yet, the parent function that we're working with is the square root of x. The next step and the graphing process is figuring out what transformations the parent function underwent. So you have to figure out what your a, k, d, and c values are. And from looking at this function, we should be able to figure it out pretty easily. So the a value is negative 2. The k value is positive 3 the d value is positive 4 and the c value is negative 5. The next step is we have to make a table of values for the parent function and this table here I got from the video when we described the parent function the square root of x. So this table of values corresponds to this parent function y is equal to the square root of x and now what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these points and we're going to put them through a mapping process. And in order to do that, we have to apply this formula here, this x over k plus d and this ay plus c. Now this formula here is the mapping process formula and you're just going to have to memorize it. Don't try to make sense of it. This is just something you should memorize. I know memorizing stuff in math is usually not good advice, but, uh, but trust me when I tell you to do so. The table for the transform function is going to depend on this formula. So we're going to take all of the x values from this table, divide them by k, the k value is 3, and then add d, d value is 4. And then we're going to take our a value, negative 2, multiply it by all the y values from this table, and then add our value of c, which is negative 5, so we could just put minus 5 here. So this here is our mapping formula for this transform function. So now what we're doing is we're taking every coordinate and putting it through the formula. So for example, let's start off with this first x value of 0 in the parent function. We're going to take 0, divide it by 3, and then add 4. And then we get a x value of 4 for the transform function. Let's take the next x value of 1. So we take 1, divide it by 3, add 4, and we get 4.33. I put this in decimals. Then we're going to take our x value of 4, divide it by 3, add 4, we get 5.33, and then same thing for 9, we end up getting 7. And then we do the same thing for the y values, except for the y values, we put them through this formula, this negative 2y minus 5. 
So this y value of 0, we would take negative 2, multiply it by 0, and then subtract 5, and we end up with negative 5. Negative 2 times 1 minus 5 gives us negative 7. Then taking this y value of 2, negative 2 times 2 minus 5 gives us negative 9, and so on and so on. So I circled our results, and these represent the x and y coordinates of the transform function. So here what I did was I took all of these final values for x and y that are circled in red and I made it into nicer coordinate form to make a nice list of coordinates. So we got the 4 and negative 5, 4.33 and negative 7, 5.33 and negative 9, and then the 7 and negative 11. And now these points here represent the points on this transform function and now all we have to do is just plot them. So now taking these transform points and then plotting them and then drawing the graph, we end up with this result. Now, you can sort of check this if it's correct by applying the transformations approximately. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take our parent function, the square root of x, and then plot it. So the square root of x looks something like this. And then let's apply each of these transformations individually and see if we sort of get this approximately. So the a value is 2 and the k value is 3. So that means that we vertically stretch it by a factor of 2 and horizontally compress it by a factor of 1 over 3. So those two have the same sort of effect. It makes the function a little skinnier, right? We vertically stretch it and horizontally compress it. Now, since the a is negative, what we're doing is we're reflecting it in the, um, in the x-axis. And then this d value of four means we move it to the right by four, and then this c value of negative five means we move it down five units. So we end up with this transform function. One more point I want to make about this graph is that the vertex of the parent function is at 0, 0. So this here represents the vertex. And then when we take the vertex and we put it through the mapping process, we get the coordinate 4 and negative 5. So the vertex that we take from the parent function and transform it, that ends up being the vertex of the transform function. And notice how it is the vertex of the transform function on our graph. This point here represents the 4 and negative 5. So let's conclude the video with a general list of steps that we undertook to graph a transform function. So the first step that we took was we state the parent function then we state the transformation values, the a, k, d, and c. Then we make a table of values for the parent function, which is already given to you from the videos that we did before. Then we make a table of values for the transform function through the mapping process. And we use this formula x over k plus d, a, y plus c. And then we take that table of values of the transform function and we graph. Now, in the next few videos, we're going to follow these steps for each of the parent functions. So there's going to be a couple of videos where we'll get a lot of practice with these steps just to get you really comfortable with this process because you will be getting tested on it for sure.